navigate around the new software. So as I say, if you can just all make sure that you've got your cup of coffee or your tea, or even a Bucks Fizz, um, we can get going very soon. I hope you're all uh, very warmly wrapped up as well. Um, I'm sitting here in my thermals, and I'm sure many of you are too. Hot water bottles and blankets also at the ready. Anyway, um, hopefully everybody uh, is now ready to go. Um, I'm sure our presenters are ready. So I'm going to kick off and as I say, good morning, everybody. And it really is uh, lovely. I can't actually see all of you, but it's great that um, a whole host of you have opted to join today's webinar. I'm Claire Tuck and I'm head of client success at Quill. Um, I've actually just uh, celebrated my 25 years with Quill. Sarah Lear is actually going to be doing the presenting today. She's the client success lead with Quill and she's also done well over 20 years. And we are supported today by Anthony Lewin, who is one of our consultant trainers. Anthony too has been here for over 20 years. So um, we can have all uh, long serving uh, members of the Quill team. Oh, going the wrong way. A little bit of housekeeping. Uh, we will be recording the webinar today. So for everybody who's registered, then you will get a copy of the event. Um, so you can play it at leisure or show it to colleagues. Um, questions can be entered directly into the Q&A area on the right of your screen. Can you, if you can look at my uh, screenshot, uh, you can actually um, field questions throughout the course um, of the demonstration. Um, and they will be answered at the end. Those that we can't actually deal with during the session, um, we will uh, respond to afterwards. We're hoping that the session will take about um, 40 to 45 minutes. In, to, in terms of the agenda, uh, then the objective of today is to help you find your way around MyQuill and get the highest return on your software investment. And really, we want to show you how to maximise and uh, optimum usage of the software. For anyone on today's call um, who is not already using MyQuill, um, we will provide the opportunity to see the MyQuill practice management and legal accounts software system in action. And at this point, oh, um, I'm now going to hand over to Sarah Lear, who uh, is going to take you through the software. So, Sarah, over to you and thank you. I'll catch up with you later. Can you stop sharing, please, Claire? Yeah. Have I done that now? Yeah. Yeah. Good morning, everybody. My name's Sarah Leah. I'm part of the client success team here at Quill, as Claire's just said. Um, my emphasis is on the software, so I deal with anything sort of to do with the software, whether it be development requests or whatever. Um, the new um, Quill software is the foundation for our future development. Software development, it can be a long process, and we're developing our fifth, fifth iteration of this software in what we call an agile manner. This means that we release enhancements on a phase basis, gather feedback, make changes and gather further feedback from our users which we pass back to our product development department. To help with the transition from the legacy software to the new My so Quill software, we find that you will find that wrapped around the new screens around the old, oh, I can't get my words out. You'll find that we've wrapped the new screens around the familiar legacy screens. Hopefully you can all see my screen and on my screen, you will see the dashboard. When you first log into My Quill, this is the screen that you will take, be taken to. Your screen may be slightly different to my screen, depending upon your permissions. If you have the correct permissions, then you will be able to see your compliance information and also other useful Fiona stats. In the middle of the screen, you will see a graph. The graph defaults to a line chart, but following user feedback, we've also added a bar chart as well. To change to a bar chart, simply select the, the graph icon on the panel and it will change to your um, to a bar chart. If you want to change back, 
then you just click the icon again. You've also got the option to change the graph type there. So what's important to you guys, I guess, is that you work mainly within clients and cases. So it's important to you to be able to um, access a case or a client. Using the MyQuill software, there are several ways that you can do this. The first way is by looking at the recent cases on the bottom left hand corner of your screen. You can see there I can scroll through, find a case and simply click on it and I will be taken to that case in the, in the database. To go back to the MyQuill dashboard, you will see that there's a queue on the top left hand corner on the blue tail toolbar. If you select that, you'll be taken back to the dashboard. Another way to search for a case is to do a search using the pink toolbar. So you can select, um, type in your search criteria and press return. This will take you to a dedicated search screen. What we're finding as we go around and do these uh, do demonstrations and get feedback from our clients, it's the clients find it helpful to untick the clients and the contacts um, on the category scan bar here and just work within the cases. You are able to continue to type to narrow your search further. If you want, you can include archive cases or exclude archive cases. You can search by all fee earners within the practice, or if you know the, ca the case belongs to a certain fee earner, you can select that fee earner and just look for the cases within their name. So that's really handy and it helps you to filter your search results as much as possible. So it makes it easier for you to find the client that you're looking for. The first time you do a search, you will be taken to the settings bar. And the set, this allows you to select which area you would like to be taken to once you have searched for a client. So if you mainly work within the documents area, then you can select documents, click save, and then when you select your client, you'll immediately be taken to documents. So this just gives you more efficiency. Going back to the overview at the top, as I've mentioned, this is a you've got the blue toolbar to the left. Looking down on this blue toolbar, it's a bit possible to expand the menu. And this gives you the descriptions of the icons so that it helps you with the navigation of MyQuill. So if I go to clients and cases, at the moment, you can see that I'm hooked onto a case. The reason I know that I'm hooked onto a case is that I've got this powder blue financial panel at the top of the screen. It tells me that I'm hooked onto Susie Sunshine, her WIP balance and her unpaid bills. The end of this powder blue screen, um, uh, panel, you can see that I've got a cross. If I unclick there, you can see that I unhook from a case. And this gives me a list of the live cases that are all around the, in the system that are to your practice. Now, again, depending on your permissions is how much you can see here. It may be that you can only see your own fee earner cases, or it may be you can see all the cases across the practice. Possible to change the view of this. So from a practice management point of view, if you're a practice manager, or you want, you want to be able to see which cases have been opened recently, you can look by recently created cases, or you can simply look by alphabetical order. The recent cases are also available here. As I, the, I did mention that, that we have um, wrapped the new software around the legacy um, software. So here you've also got the option to use the familiar legacy screen, just as a little bit of a comfort blanket, so you can use this legacy search. So there are lots of different ways to, for you to be able to access your clients and cases. Just while I'm on this screen, I will mention as well from here, you can also open a new client or a new case. So if I click on new case, I can then search for a client, can learn to spell, press return, bring me up a list of the clients, I can go next, and then that takes me to my um, to my um, case, so I can open the case from there. This screen also has further actions so that I can look at my search, my case contacts, search for deeds, and to search for wills. Once I've found the case that I'm looking for, I can select the case. 
and then I've got different actions I can carry out. If I go back to the dash dashboard, we've got something called quick links. These quick links are common throughout the database and we've done diagnostics across the database to see what the common actions are that are used. You can see from here that I can open a new client, complete a conflict check, upload the document, record a quick time entry, or raise an e-chip. If I go to the case, client and cases screen, you can see that these quick links are still common and that I can still get to them no matter where I am. That's also true of the search that's at the top, so I can search from wherever I am, access the recent cases from wherever I am, from whichever screen I'm on, so it just makes it easier to move around the database. Another action that I can carry out is that you can see that Mr Lawrence Steen has got an email address here. If I click on the email address, depending on your browser settings, it will open an email for you so that you can and you can send an email directly from this screen as well. Micro is available um, on your mobile, on your browser settings. So say, for example, you're out and about and you're going to go and see Mr Lawrence and you're running a bit late, you will be able to make a call um, from your mobile to Mr Lawrence just to say that you're going to be late in the same way that you might order a takeaway pizza for when you access the takeaways um, website. On here, you've also got, if you subscribe to our AML services, the, the, the information to let you know what your AML check status is. So from here, you can view and also carry out AML um, checks if you use that service. Here, you've also got your address book. So again, if you're out and about, it'll actually give you a handy map so you can see where to go. And you can edit your addresses from here as well. Again, taking you to the legacy screen. Your phone numbers are also available here. You can see Mr Lawrence has, we've got two telephone numbers stored for him. And at the moment, the primary contact is his mobile number that is then shown in the blue panel. If you wanted to change that, you can simply edit the client and select which contact or which address, if there's more than one address, you would like to be, um, be shown on this panel. Obviously, compliance is really important. And from here, you can go to the, again, the legacy screens to upload your documents, uh, sorry, not your documents, your ID um, documents. And it also gives you an indication as to whether you've got enough identification documents stored or not. Going back to the case information on here, you can edit the case information from here, either using the pencil or edit case up here. And that will take you to your, again, the legacy screen. What has changed? is that you've got the matter notes here, and I've just put these notes can be recorded on the screen. When I submit them, these are now shown at the top of the, of the um, client cases screen so that they're easy to see for everybody. So you can put important information in there. From here, I can also open a new case and a new client, or add a new client contact or a new case contact. The client contacts are stored here. Mr. Uh, Mr. Lawrence is the only client on here, but say for example, he was going to buy a house with somebody, then I can add a new client contact here as well. Another way to make sure, com sure your conflict checks are more robust is to add other case contacts so that you've got a, a full catalogue of the people that you're dealing with on the case. It's also helpful for your documents as well because you can merge these um, details through to your documents if you use our document management. And you can also, again, got mail to links so that if you've got the correct browser settings, you can open an email form. So there's some of the actions that you can carry out within the case. And from here, you can also archive. I've also I've already mentioned the powder blue financial panel at the top of the screen. If I click on it, as, as I said before, you can see which client it is, their WIP balance and their unpaid bills. If by selecting see more, I can also see more financial data. The reason that we've put this information on this blue bar is because this blue bar is available on all the pages again. So it doesn't matter whether I'm in documents 
our forms, I can still get to this information. From here, I can select to drill down to office, the office ledger and see all the office details. You know, some and I can go back to the case details. So I've got all that information there. I can look at my time ledger and I can see how I'm doing about my credit limit. At the moment, one of the uh, agile projects that we're working on is um, Organizer. The Organizer is currently going into beta. So you may not have uh, the option to look at Organizer at the moment, but if you would like it, then please let us know. Um, what we've done is we've added what we call a customizable Kanban board so that you can see all the tasks and you can manage the tasks and move them around really easily. You've also got a, a calendar view so you can see um, your tasks. We are at the moment looking for people that would be willing to beta test the organiser for us and give us constructive feedback and also to be an opportunity to be part, uh, part of the future development and influence the um, development of organiser. If you're interested in doing that, then please email organiserbeta at quill.co.uk. If you'd like to discuss how our organiser can help with your practice, then, um, then please email our sales department. Once you've got access to um, the organiser, you can add milestones, events and tasks. These um, help you manage your case and project manage your case. So by adding a task, you can simply add a task, add a description, assign myself as a user, I want to sign other people as users, then I can also do that. I can add it to a milestone if I wish. And then I can add a reminder and save that. And that will go into my calendar so that I know that I've got to do it. There's different views of the calendar. I can view the calendar by day, week or month. And the milestones go into a timeline view. So I can clearly see clearly where my case is up to. If you use our documents, then you will find that the documents has now got different levels. So I've mentioned the powder blue trap, um, financial bar. If I unclick from here, this takes me to my practice level. So these are the, all the non-confidential documents that can be seen throughout the practice. So you can put all the documents here that you want all, the whole of your practice to have access to. If I select a case, I've now got two levels. So you can see here that I've got Mr. Lawrence um, here, Mr. Lawrence's details here, and it's I've put in here I've put ID checks. So Mr. Lawrence has got two cases. No matter which one of his cases I'm, I'm on, I will be able to see the documents within here. And then you've got your usual case documents. So you, you can have your subfolders and your folders. And you can move documents about really easily just by grabbing the icon and moving them around. It's also possible to carry out bulk actions just by simply ticking the documents that I want. And then I can either zip or convert to PDF. If I want to change the name of the document, I'll kind of look at the document. I can look at the panel and quickly through. You can see here that I've got three dots at the top right hand corner. I can edit the details here and I can add notes here which are searchable fields that help me again manage my documents. So you can see here now if I select search it'll come up with that document and it's changed the document um, the document name. So I've got the option to do that as well. I can filter by label. Or I can change the date um, I can filter the documents by name or date. From here, I can also access bundle docs if you subscribe to bundle docs. Again, you've got your templates because you don't want to be going into your templates all the time. Or I can add a note. And then add telephone and add um, 
I'm recording to that note and it will then, then slip into the file or I can upload a document or drag and drop documents in. I've also got the option to do all case documents and it tells me which folder these documents are in. And from here, I can also add whether I want to group or ungroup the documents. So it's all really quick and easy and simple to do. Again, I've got my case, I've got can search from here, I've got recent cases from here, I've got the financial panel so I can move around, and I've also got my quick links. Moving on to forms, the forms has changed slightly recently, but from here I can, I've got access to over 2,000 forms. That some of the fields that are mergeable, you can see that the ones that say date merge mean that I can merge details from my quill into the form. You can download, have a look at your completed forms here, and as you could before, you can look at the different status of the form. And you can go directly, you can view input progress forms and you can um, go directly to the part, our forms part of that part, form EVO. From here, you can also um, open the link to the SDL port, SDLT portal to do your stamp duty. And in the coming weeks, we are going to be releasing more functionality to make you so that you can merge details from MyQuill to SDLT and we'll let you know further about that when it happens. Another thing that's really important to um, you guys is to be able to record time. And there are different ways to record time in my quill. First type way is directly from the dashboard and the, my, and the quick link. As I've said, that quick link is available from wherever you are. So you can also go onto the quick link and record time from there. Or, you've got the option to go to the legacy time recording screen that everybody's familiar with already. From here, you can also start a stopwatch. Stopwatches are a little like Marmite. Some people love them, some people hate them. But if you start a stopwatch and as you move about the database, whether you're in documents or on the dashboard or client cases, the stopwatch moves with you so that you don't forget that it's got it started. You can pause it and then Record as chargeable or non-chargeable, add it to a case, and then send it to, it to a time record and send it to the ledger. If you're one of the people that don't like um, stopwatches, you can collapse it and you never have to see it again. Another thing that's important is to be able to record all the different um, the money that comes in for the clip for the client and goes out for the client to make sure that you're compliant with the solicitor's um, accounts regulations. When you click onto the client, the money section, you will be able to see all the details about that client. If you're not hooked onto a client, then you will be at practice level and you'll be able to see your manage each If you work, if you work with our legal um, integration, you'll be also see, be able to see the payment requests. And from here, you can also submit your VAT return using MTD to the HMRC, which is quite a mouthful in this time in the morning, I can tell you. Being hooked onto a client, the practice menu then collapses so that you've got easy access to all of the client data you want. You can move about the ledgers using these icons here on the toolbar or by clicking here. If you want to see more of your screen, then you can collapse this toolbar, make it bigger or extend it again. You can see all your financial information. If you use the e chits, then you can go on new and e chit, and you'll still be able to see this information here so that you know that you're compliant with this um, solicitor's accounts regulations because you can see the balance. You've also got the option here to enter your bank details and it will check your bank details for you, although it can't check actual um, um, whether it's the correct account name, it can check to make sure the sort code and the, and the account number match the bank. And obviously, once you've done your e-chip, that'll go to your cashier so that they can post it for you. 
from here, you can also access your time ledgers and your work in progress. So say, for example, on your work in progress, if you've made an um, error with um, a spelling mistake on your narrative or something like that, it's possible to change it there. And then obviously we don't allow you to change figures or anything like that. So you've also got your bill assembly. So if you've created a bill within Quill, you can then go to your bill assembly and produce the bill from there as well in, the, in a Word document that will then save to your documents automatically for you. And then here you've got your report, you've got your accounts ledger, your billing card and your account statement. Your accounts ledger and your billing guide are also available on your financial panel to help with you. And here you've got a really handy little screen, your associated cases. As I said previously, Mr Lawrence has got two, two cases and you can see there, this is the case that I'm on and this is his will case. So you can see clearly how much he owes and where all the money is. We've also got the reports module that is pretty much the same as the previous one. You can search for a report. And you can if you it's a common one that you use, you can see that I've added a star next to mine so that I can get to them really easy because they go to the private uh, the favorite reports. And from part compliance reasons, your monthly and your weekly reports are also stored in here. Moving on, keep an eye on our WhatsApp section or what's the new section. You can see there that we've put um, we're putting handy information in about um, different uh, development that we're doing on the new client MyQuill software. We've also here got help that, um, a help section that leads you to our support department. You've got a help icon on every screen. What you can do is you can go to our bot. And if you've got a keyword, search for the keyword. So I've put password. And the bot will find any user guides that it thinks are, are, are relevant to what you've typed. If the app doesn't help you, you can get in touch. And you can either go to a live chat or leave a message for our support department and they'll, go, and they'll speak to you from there. The bottom left hand corner. You've got the option to change your mode. So if I just go back to the dashboard. You can see here I'm able to change the screen to night mode if you prefer night mode. Or I'm able to screen, change the screen to high contrast. The high contrast mode is being accessibility tested and it is suitable for people with dyslexia and color blindness. And as I'm finding also people that are a little bit older. I don't think I've got anything else. So Claire, back over to you. Well, um, thank you very much, Sarah, for that very um, insightful uh, demonstration. Um, I'm sure you'll all agree it was uh, extremely helpful. Um, we do actually have um, a load of different ways for getting in, in touch with us. Um, so to ensure you can actually get the best out of the software, I appreciate um, today probably went uh, relatively quickly and I'm sure there's lots of um, queries that you will still have. So in terms of getting in touch with us, you can email the client success team. Uh, so the email address is on the screen. You can contact the support team. And yes, we are manned by people and a lovely bunch of uh, people they all are in the support team. There's also um, lots of useful articles that you can go um, to uh, download or view through the knowledge base system. That's our Zendesk support system. Uh, we've got training videos that we can provide links to and as Sarah uh, mentioned in her demonstration, um, you can also uh, keep your eye out for the what's new area on my quill. Now, I am aware that um, we've had various questions uh, raised throughout Sarah's demonstration. I believe Anthony Lewin has been um, answering many of those within the chat. And I think there were a couple um, that were asked through the um, Q&A button. So, Anthony, can I ask you um, to just possibly go through the couple of questions that were asked um, on the by the Q&A session? Yes, certainly. Thanks, Claire. Um, so one of the questions that was asked is, can the 
case list view sort by default be changed to from recent to automatically uh, alphabetically a big one so if i can share my screen i can show you that <clears throat> wait a bit me that's okay i should be able to share it now you see the screen there so yeah. so if you wanted to change the order are you going to the clients and cases tab on the left hand side select clients and cases and then towards the right hand corner uh, you have the recent case recently asked it, accessed there you can change to client name ascending or descending and that should change the order of your clients by, uh, of the list there by client's name so hopefully that helps with that uh, question um if you navigate away from that screen and then back on it does change the order so i don't know if that's an option to set it as default so when you select that option it will always keep that facility uh we will need to check that for you but um i'll just double check that again yeah so it does default back to the recently access so yeah, it's it just something that we'll, we'll put forward for you to see if that's an option to default to, to to that selection all right and then uh, another question that we had is can you point out again the search settings so uh, in a similar area really the search settings so again you go into the clients and cases tab this is where you see the search settings where you could search by fee earner it will default to yourself uh, you can search by case type and change the option to uh, to see the list of how uh, uh, the clients and, and cases are, are listed for you. If you are hooked onto a case and you want to return back to that search option, then on the pink, uh, pale, sorry, the pale blue section at the top there, if you click on the X in the top right hand corner to clear the current case, that will then send you back to that search facility or search setting option. OK, uh, I couldn't see any more or any further questions on the list on the chat or the Q&A um, unless I've missed anything. OK, well, um, thank you for that, Anthony. Um, if there are uh, no more questions, then um, we can wrap this session up. Um, it has actually been thank you very much, uh, everybody, for attending. Um, we hope you've uh, found it very useful. Uh, we will be sending everybody a recording of the session uh, and there will be answers included um, to questions raised. We will get in touch with everybody. If you feel that you would like to have another session on MyQuill, please do get in touch with us. We want you to get the most out of it. We don't want you to sit there um, being confused or not quite understanding what you need to do next. We've got lots of help uh, available in different modes. Um, and please do take advantage um, of that. Um, I'd just like to thank Sarah and Anthony again for their contributions today. I think Sarah probably deserves a very large glass of something. Um, and I'd like to, um, you know, wish you all a merry festive season, whatever you're doing, and uh, enjoy your day. And thank you very much for taking the time to join us this morning. Thank you. Thank you.